Aha, you guys thought it was me, didn't you? Nope. This is my buddy Todd Sykes. Yeah, we got Ken's 67 GTO here that we're going to pinstripe, and I'm going to show you guys how to do the striping. Actually, Todd's going to show you. I'm going to narrate it and uh, video him. We got a little wobble in the stripe right here. So I'm just going to wipe it back off. Just up to a certain point there. Then he'll feather it back in. His hand accidentally hit the door handle as he was going across it. It just cleans right back off. So now he'll connect the tape back together. I'll show you how to feather it in. Okay, I got a question. I know everybody else is going to ask you. When you start out, why do you dab the um, paint onto the uh, tape? Well, when you load the brush, it normally loads kind of heavy on the tip. So by hitting it on the tape, like I can show you on the cup here, it just takes that heaviness off. So it helps you cut through the line and lay it back down. Otherwise, you end show up with... Show me that again. Just when you load the brush, it has a heavy concentration on the tip. So I use the tape to, I can show you on the cup here, just to kind of knock that heaviness off. So it lets it load the line a whole lot easier. I'm using the one shot uh, lettering enamels. Basically, I use it right out of the jar, the colors come. I want to make sure and stir them well. Uh, I use a little bit of just mineral spirits to thin it. The consistency you're looking for is just a uh, you want some drips to come off the brush, uh, a little heavier than what cream might be. If you get it too thin, then it doesn't want to cover well. If you get it too heavy, then you end up with wide spots and narrow spots in your stripes. So the consistency is really important, and a lot of it is just feel. Temperature has a little bit to do with it. Sometimes cold shops, it's a little harder, but ideally 65 degree weather is perfect for pinstriping. So in other words, Full Blown Customs is the perfect shop, huh? There you go, it's always cold here. <laughs> I got a question for you, Todd. Yep. Now, how, how are you going to um, tie that one back in without making it wider or smaller? Basically, I knifed this point out. I'm starting back up here, and I'm starting small, and I widen out before I get to this point. And it's just a matter of watching the width of the brush and watching the width of the stripe. Just wanted to talk about the reason for the quarter-inch tape. It's basically just a guideline for you to run your pinstripe next to, not actually running it up against it, but just kind of holding the distance. The reason for the stripe, I use it as a tool. Some people say, oh, you're cheating because you're using a stripe uh, tape. Uh, basically, it helps even out the body line. It makes sure that you're putting the stripe correctly on the car. I'm actually, after we do the first line, I'm going to remove the tape and then I will hand run a line, a smaller one, underneath that, keeping as even as a consistency on the stripe as possible from one end to the other. Yeah, here at uh, Full Blown Customs, you've got to be multi-talented. You've got to be able to work and talk. And I just wanted to say that I've always appreciated Ed's uh, professionalism when it comes to the finish on a car because 
it's always nice. It's a great surface to work on, a great surface to stripe on. And uh, known that a lot of years, and it's uh, been a fun gig we've had going on for the past 16, 17 years. He's older than me. Not much. <laughs> All right, what I've done, we've removed the tape and get ready to run the second line. Uh, I've actually thinned my paint just a little bit, cleaned my brush, and kind of knifing the edge out here on the cup. You can kind of see I'm just kind of pulling it. Some people palette their paint out on a magazine. I just like carrying my cup and doing it right here. So. What do you mean by knifing? Uh, basically, I'm taking the heaviness way out of the paint. Uh, like I showed you where I left a little bit off of the, the tape. Uh, it's just, it's thin the brush out so we can actually pull a smaller line. So is it more difficult to tie in on a smaller stripe like that? Yeah, it is. Uh, width has to be a lot more consistent. I usually, when I'm all done, I'll walk, do a once walk around the car and make sure everything looks consistent when it's done. Do you got to remember that it is hand painted. It's not done by a, a machine. And a lot of this just is trial and error experience over the years. As you guys can see right here, this is what we were just talking about. He's going to go back in and touch this up. Now, he was saying a minute ago about using tape and people think he's cheating. Do you guys see any tape there? The man can stripe. Taught him everything I know. Took 20 minutes. Hey now. <laughs> Todd loves watching me trying to stripe. <laughs> I invented the slash striping though. What that is, is that's when Todd went out um, bike riding one weekend. And I was stuck down here by myself. Job had to leave on a Monday. I invented what I call slash striping. I'll have to show you guys that one. It's, it's not real pretty, but hey, it works. Ed Hubs brings to you his version of slash striping. Don't laugh in the background, Todd. Here we go down the last fender on the left side, finishing off the stripe. Got another. 16, 18 inches to go and this car will be striped. Whole process by the time you clean the car, lay out the stripes, get your paint mixed up, get your stripes on, everything put away. Probably looking at an hour to hour and a half worth of time. ask us to do in memory of his dad and his dad used to always do this lettering here and it's uh, the old comic book style lettering uh, BC now we're going to do the comic book style well it's actually a cartoon in the newspaper <laughs> 